Hi everybody from Tech Council, welcome to the second half of the comparison between the Sony Xperia Double C and the Samsung Nexus 10. In this second half, we will see a um, few things regarding performance and games in general, browsing, multimedia, and then we will close with pro and cons. Let's start with the multimedia side. Just let me remind you a few hardware specs for focusing multimedia. We have the main camera for this Sony, which is the 8 megapixel sensor. It's an Eximor R sensor, backside illuminated with uh, a lens of a purchase size f2.4. We don't have LED flash here. We have instead the main camera for what concern this Nexus 10 is 5 megapixel camera. We have LED flash, we don't have, that's a pity, backside illuminated sensor for this 5 megapixel camera. I cannot remember exactly the aperture size of this lens should be at least f2.6, but I guess it should be better, but I may be wrong. I, I, you know, if you want to have um, a better idea of the uh, aperture size of the device, you may give a look to my dedicated multimedia focus. So these are the main hardware differences for concerning the multimedia side. Now let's analyze the UI for what concerns these two uh, camera. Here we have the where is it? Oh, oh I've lost it. Here we go. So we have here the UI for what concern the here we go the Nexus 10 and this is the UI for what concern the Sony Xperia Tablet C. We have of course much more customization made by Sony for the UI of this uh, camera. We have both the uh, button for video shooting, video shooting and picture taking on that device. We have the you know superior auto mode, normal mode, video camera, but sharp picture effect, so we can apply some real-time effect to the pictures with panorama, scene selection from camera and from video. And we have of course many many settings and we have even have HDR you know uh, picture on this uh, Sony Xperia Tablet Z. So we have many many much more settings on the Sony Xperia Tablet Z for what concerns the camera you are giving a look to the uh, you know camera interface of the Nexus 10 is pretty standard. It's nothing but a stock. Uh, it's a stock interface. We have a few settings with this new some kind of carousel. What is that? We go. This was introduced in um, into Android 4.3. We have exposure. We have few settings. And we have. Countdown timer, geo tagging, we have picture size, white balance, and scene selection. So we have a flash mode, so we have very quite a few settings into this stock camera. We have the mode selection, you have picture, video, panorama, and photosphere. Maybe photosphere is the most interesting things of this stock of this stock camera. So these are the difference for concern the UI. But let's give a look to the result and the picture and the video taken. If you want to have a better in-depth view of the multimedia capabilities of these two devices, I do uh, I please uh, give a look to my you know dedicated uh, focus multimedia for, for both these devices. For what concern picture quality, they are quite, you know, uh, nothing to to scream about. They're really, a bit, you know, on the on the lower side, especially for what concern the Sony Xperia Tablet Z. Consider that we have eight megapixel Eximor R sensor. We have, you know, very few details. We have very, very so much noise into the picture. I mean, we have maybe good macros, but nothing nothing really interesting and the same things goes for the Nexus 10 we even have you know lower resolution picture because we have just 5 megapixel but you know to be honest it's very difficult it's nowadays to find a tablet with a very good camera
So this is nothing new for concerned these two devices, quite mediocre camera on both on both these two devices. For what concerns that the uh, uh, audio side of this device, we have here the Walkman application made by Sony and here we have nothing but uh, Google Music of course. Mm, aside the differences between the UI of these two devices, uh, for what concerns sound playback, we have very good sound output from the headphones for what concerns the Sony Spear WC and we have quite good output from this Nexus 10. The output from the Sony Spear WC is better especially for what concerns equalization the equalization is really really good especially for the clear bass settings which you know outputs very very good bass from this headphone jack of the Sony Xperia Type Z. We have uh, nothing special here on Nexus 10 but it's nevertheless it's uh, you know it's a medium range output for what concerns the Nexus 10 nothing special but it's it's not bad at all. So better output for what concern uh, headphone output from the Sony Xperia Type Z. For what concern the um, integrated dual stereo speakers of course we have a different situation the front uh, facing speaker for concern Nexus 10 are better of the you know side side facing Nexus uh, side facing speaker of the Sony Xperia tablet Z. That's what will concern the uh, audio side of these two devices. For what concern the video playback. Once more, as usual, as any other Android devices nowadays, we have some problem in reproducing uh, the MKV file and some other type of uh, video file format on uh, these two devices. So the best thing is just to, uh, you know, with the default player, to reproduce the, um, the MP4 file like this one. The same goes for the Nexus 10, but for both devices, if we use a third-party video player, like for instance MX player or Dance player, we won't have any kind of problem reproducing any type of video files like MKV or even Windows Media Video. So these are all the coverage for concerning the multimedia part of these two devices. We don't have to forget that the Sony Xperia Type Z even have the IR blaster so we can control for instance our TV using this device which is quite good. For what concerns performance in general, let me remind you the hardware specs here. We have the uh, 5250 uh, Cortex A15 dual core 1.7 uh, GHz clocked at uh, in, into the next 10. We have the Armali 604 GPU and 2 GB of RAM. Here we have the um, GPU which is the Adreno 320, we have the CPU which is the Snapdragon S4 Pro, it's the Epicure 8064 quad core CPU clock at 1.5 GHz, 2 GB of RAM, and as I told you, the GPU is the Adreno 320. So both hardware architecture are very good, no problem for concern general usage, browsing and you know moving uh, the, uh, the UI it's perfectly smooth on both devices. More or less we always have on any Android tablet like you've seen sometimes some uh, small lags while you know scrolling through the home because it has to cache the different screen. And then we don't have any kind of problem. This is quite common between, you know, Android tablets at least. So no problem for what concerns general performance of everyday performance. We have slightly a bit behavior for what concerns games. I mean, the very very high resolution into the Nexus 10. You know, it's it's not the best things for what concerns games. I mean, the Nexus 10 pays a little bit in terms of performances and in terms of uh, some frame drops uh, while playing very heavy games like for instance this Riptide GP2. So just 
let me show you. These things happen nevertheless when we have very very high settings for all concern graphics. So I'm using the default automatic settings for all concern graphics on both devices. And just to give you the normal behavior. So what I want to show you is that normally playing most of the games you won't have and you won't find uh, any differences between these two devices. But if you play some, some intensive graphics games or you can set up the graphic details and you set the graphic details on the maximum possible level with certain games like for instance this uh, Riptide GP2, we can have some frame drops. So in this case the Nexus 10, you know, drops some frames in respect of the Sony Xperia tablet C. Nevertheless, having a much higher resolution, the Nexus 10 maintains a very very good overall graphic details. So here we have the default settings, which is uh, generally speaking um, set to uh, highest level on the uh, Sony Xperia Tablet Z. Just let me turn up the volume a little bit. So although the Nexus 10 with the default settings at, has a uh, you know a lower resolution for full concern. Uh, texture or even you know texture quality is has less details but nevertheless it's very very good the graphics because we have a higher resolution and it compensate uh, you know with the lower resolution of the texture so the overall quality is really really good and we don't have any kind of perf performance lags or frames drop no problem so this is the default settings and this is what normally happens when you use this device for gaming. Same goes for the Sony Xperia Tablet Z which has a default settings with a higher um, graphic details for certain texture for instance and it's very very fast and fluid. So this one is a very very good device for gaming to like the Nexus 10. You can see the graphic details are very high, very very good graphics. Okay. Now if we go once more into settings let me turn down the volume okay and we select the maximum graphic details on both devices now you will see that the nexus 10 start dropping a little bit some some more frames in respect of the sony Xperia tablet c this may be you know partially due to the hmm, different hardware architecture probably although the hardware architecture of this um, Nexus 10 is really good because we have a dual core okay but we have A15 you know architecture okay we have the same the same graphic details on both devices now and they both set up to the maximum quality possible. So let's start the game and now you will see the difference. Now the graphic details on the Nexus 10 are really crazy both for the quality of the texture as well as for the highest resolution of this display. But you will see in a second when the race starts that we have few frame less now with the graphics set to the high level. Let's put the Sony Xperia Tablet Z on 
suppose. Okay. Now you see that the we have some frame drops, some starting here and there. I mean, we can still play the game, but it's not as enjoyable as it was before. I mean, it's not. I wouldn't say maybe enjoyable, I would say smooth as before. Although now the graphic details are really crazy because we have this higher resolution, which is 2,564,600 uh, pixel, very, very high. Now you will see the game with the maximum details on the Sony Spia Tablet Z. So as you can see, even if here we lose something in terms of smoothness, the difference is not so you know visible like on the Nexus 10. There's much less difference, uh, you know, less frames dropped on the Sony Spia Tablet Z, definitely. So this is what happens. Um, usually, using these two devices in everyday life, you don't have any kind of problem. And 99% of the time, you won't have any kind of problem even in playing games. But on the Nexus 10 using very very high resolution game uh, or maybe to be more precise very graphic intensive game like this uh, Riptide GP2 you may have a little bit of you know frame drop especially if you set up the graphic details to the maximum possible level but if you use the default settings you won't find any kind of problem so this is what concerns performance is. Let's analyze a lot of things which is really interesting to me, which are the browser. Let's start with the Chrome. Okay. I don't like Chrome, definitely. It's not the best browser, but nevertheless, these two devices are very powerful. And, you know, even Chrome, which is usually not a good browser, you know, it's really, really good. And those in, in with these two devices sorry oops we go I don't know what we choose Republica Napoli let's see if we can get the default page I'm using different pages sorry guys don't know why okay now we have the same pages. So as you can see, very, very good. Maybe it's a little bit more, you know, uh, soft on the Sony Spia Tablet Z for what concerns scrolling, while it's a little bit flashy here on the Nexus 10, it's extremely fast while scrolling, while it's, you know, it's smooth on the Sony SPR Tablet C is, is fast here too, but it's something like a little bit more like the iPad. We don't have so any kind of problem in scrolling and even in zooming in and out, as you can see. Even in panning, no kind of problem at all. So even using the Chrome browser, which is to me not definitely not the best browser, this device behave really, really great. But to me, the best of this browsing experience can be achieved just using a browser like Ocean Browser. Not only because it goes into full screen mode and you can see, you can use the quick settings uh, for navigation, quick bar for navigation, but even because we have the flash support, which is really, really interesting. So let's get into Republica for these both devices let's get into here history 
and let's select Republica. Oops, yes, history and Republica. So this is the mobile version, of course. Now let's get into the desktop version. Here we go. And you see that loading the page is more or less the same on both devices. As you can see here, we have Flash support because I installed the Flash player on this Ocean browser on both devices. As you can see, it's extremely fast and smooth on both of them. And we have full screen, we have quick navigation bar here and here, very, very good, interesting. We have no problem in pinch zooming, even in panning, of course. We even have, which is really interesting, double tap to text reflow. Let me see if I can zoom a little bit more to show you the text reflow. Okay, so this is a wonderful browser. And now let me show you what happens when we do start using Flash. Just select the Flash icon here, Flash loaded, Flash banner loaded. So no problem in pinch zooming once more, no problem in panning, okay? And even no problem in scrolling. So great, great, great. The Ocean browser is wonderful on both these you know devices very very good I do suggest you to use the ocean browser on this kind of devices so we have substantially you know a draw here so we saw that the multimedia side is more or less a draw on the bad side because both devices you know doesn't have don't have a wonderful camera maybe a little bit more the Sony Xperia Double Z we have substantially drove work concern performances maybe a little bit more on performance on the Sony Xperia Double Z in certain kind of games with very high uh, graphic details where well, we have really a draw for work concern the browser experience so if we you know draw the line and talk about the pro and the cons the first things i want to tell you is that maybe here we have the to me at least actually the best tablets on the android market nowadays and we have of course pro and cons on both devices we have let's start from the uh, sony Xperia tablet z we have great device for concern design materials and Wait, it's really thin. Such a pleasure to use more concern, you know, lightness. And it has a very good display, although not the best display actually on the market. Very, very good hardware architecture, because we have, um, although not the latest CPU on the market, we have very powerful hardware architecture. Moreover, we have what? LT connectivity. We have micro SD card slot. And we have, of course, a P55 and 57 certification. We have such a complete device, which is really, really a pleasure to use. Maybe the only real downside of this device is the price. You know, the LTE version, this one, costs about 699 euros. While the Wi-Fi only device, the, um, the 16 gigabyte device, uh, should cost around 499 euros so quite high price tag for this Sony Xperia Tablet C. On the other side we have the Nexus 10, much more affordable price tag, but we don't have LT, we don't have IP certification, but we have the best display actually on the market. We have all the Nexus flexibility and charm, let me tell you, because we have device which will be always up to date, very very customizable we can install many custom rom unlock it easily 
no kind of problem for what consider this uh, next step. And we even have a very good hardware architecture, even although here we don't have as for the Sony Xperia Tablet Z, the best hardware architecture actually on the market. Much more uh, affordable price tag, as I told you, maybe uh, the only real downside, at least for me, of these devices are that we cannot expand the internal storage and that this device is not quite easy to find on certain European market like, for instance, in my country, Italy. So, for what concerns this comparison between the Sony Xperia Z and the Nexus 10, that's all, as you can see, that's not a real winner, it's just you who decide who is the winner and whose of this tablet is the best for you. So I hope I, you know, didn't didn't be too on uh, boring for you. Hope I could underline any and the most interesting differences between these two tablet. So once more, thanks for watching, and bye from TechPost.